Oh, come on, church, give him a hand. There you go. There you go. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, upper 70s, low humidity. Ha, 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 ha. That's good, that's good weather to put meat on fire. So that's hopefully not meat on fire because that's bad. Uh, meat over fire indirectly, not, not bad. So, But good morning. Welcome to Acting United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Matthew Stoltz and uh, I'd like to welcome you here. And for those of you joining us online via YouTube, welcome to YouTubers as well. Uh, we have a few things in the life of the church we want to promote. Make sure they are on your calendar as well. So let's go through uh, this quick series of announcements. Bingo! It's coming. Music Bingo, Saturday, April 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, $5 a family or car load. Yes, those of you who grew up in the era of how many can you put in the station wagon for the drive-in theater, now you've got another way to practice those skills you honed in your youth. Um, as many as you can fit into a car, five bucks. Uh, please bring an appetizer to share, and there will be prizes. There will be prizes. But it's, 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 uh, it's a fellowship event. It is just for us to have fun, so please plan on being here. It's coming Saturday, April 20th, 5 to 7 p.m., and it'll be in the fellowship hall. So there's the fellowship. Now we're going to switch over to service. Pack Away Hunger, Sunday, May 5th from 2 to 4 p.m. We need about 30 to 40 people to reach our goal of packing 10,000 meal kits. Um, you can sign up online. You can call the church office uh, to be a part of that. It is an event that is uh, very, very productive. And it, it has a little bit of fellowship in it too because you're just there doing your thing and there's people around you and you can visit and and get to know your, uh, your church family a little, little better on that. Um, and it is really important that we balance the different kinds of mission here at the church. Not just the kind of mission where our, our, our hearts are led to be generous and, and we share some of our financial means to help somebody. That's wonderful. That's, that's missions. But the hands-on, my hands worked to do something to help somebody else is so critical for our spirituality and our discipleship. Uh, so I really hope that you can can be there for that 2 to 4 p.m. Sunday, May 5th. And then finally, this coming Wednesday, missions and fellowship. Combine for the fellowship dinner. Uh, it's going to be at 6 p.m. Missions will be hosting, and uh, I will be making the pulled pork. So you don't want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. Uh, it will be this. Uh, it'll start at 6. Um, I can't remember on this one. Do we need people to bring anything? Was Barb here? No. Nope. It is all covered. You don't need to bring anything except your smiling face and a good appetite. It'll be awesome. I, yep, it will be. It'll be good. Okay, so that will be this Wednesday at 6, and we hope to see you there. All right, wow. This time of year is a lot of fun. we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, speaking of that, I do want to take a moment to share with you some tragic news in our extended church family. Mary Kramer, who is our uh, senior uh, teacher for our preschool, her husband died of a heart attack this morning. And so uh, I didn't want to just tuck that in under prayer requests, because um, many of you know and love Mary. She's fabulous. She has done an amazing job uh, as lead teacher for our, our preschool here at Acting I Methodist Church. Um, so prayers for her and her family. Um, I just, no, no words other than please pray. How about that? I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, tragedy is its own language. So we just pray for her comfort and peace. Um, if there's any other information that we can send out to you, needs for uh, cards or whatever, uh, feel free to do that on your own. But if we have a concerted uh, effort on any of that, we will be sure and let you know via AgapeNet email. And um, that will go out as we have information to share. But uh, in the meantime, please be in prayer for Mary and her family. Whew. I've done this with you before. Let's, let's try this uh, once more. Uh, as 
people of faith, we know that even in the, the sacred texts of the Bible, there are many different languages where these words appeared first. Uh, many words in the New Testament were originally in Aramaic. Uh, many words in the Hebrew Bible were in Hebrew, and so on and so forth. Latin, Greek, all kinds of different languages. But in Hebrew, one of the words, one of the words used to describe and actually name God is Ruach. Can you say Ruach? Ruach is a word that can also mean breath or wind. And it's, it's a reminder that as we are just simply needing sustained to live, to breathe, to get oxygen into our bloodstreams, through our lungs, that that's just a reminder of God's presence. And the other thing is for anyone who might need assistance for asthma or for other breathing things, just remember that each time you're just trying to calmly breathe, that God is with you, filling you up from the inside. So let's just take a moment to center on that. I'm going to ask that you just breathe in through your nose. Hold it for a second. Uh, and breathe out through your mouth. Okay, let's do that one more time. But when you exhale, say Ruah. In through your nose. Ruah. Amen. We continue our worship series on change. Now, last week, we were reminded that the Creator God made us for change. We're made for this, was our, was our theme. Um, creating an amazing physical body, a curious mind, and a willing spirit to grow and to change over the course of our lives. And it is what makes life vital. And it is the bedrock for our spiritual path. You know, you're never going to know what's possible in your life unless you pop the top of that container of imagination. When we check out what is inside and we take a look under the hood, all kinds of adventures can begin. Good, you go first. My brain is suspicious of change. Anything out of the of change anything out of the ordinary can cause my brain to complain but I was created for a purpose formed into something spectacular not just created but recreated again and again and again and alright let's go through as a church and sing this along with Blake one more time. Change is good, you go first. My brain is suspicious of change. Anything out of the ordinary can cause my brain to complain. But I was created for a purpose, formed into something spectacular. Not just created, but recreated again. Our scripture this week, our scripture this week invites us to remember the baptism of Jesus and the message that we as followers of Jesus are changed constantly from the inside out. Transformation does not start with the action of change itself, but a willingness within our spirits to lean into the life path that is calling us. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, You refresh us from the inside out with Your water of life and spirit. Open us to Your presence within us and help us to see how You are reshaping our spirits each day. Calm our fears and animate our spirits 
for this time of discovery. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our opening song, Cry of My Heart. be seated. And at this time, could we have the children come forward for the children's moment, please? All right, come on down. It's Monty Hall. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> they don't know who Monty Hall is, but they've missed out. Sheltered childhoods. How are we doing today? A great, oh, fantastic, I like that. Well, the uh, sermon series that uh, Pastor Matthews put together is tremendous. And uh, they even had great children's stuff, so I don't have to uh, elaborate too badly, but there's always some ways to get around it. Uh, this, this week we're talking about how it feels to go through change, okay, which is, uh, can be scary sometimes, you know. You guys ever go through any changes in your life? Name one. New teacher at the beginning of the year. It can be good. How about getting older? Are you older now? How old are you now? Six. Oh, my gosh. I used to be six about 400 years ago. Uh, how about, well, maybe 350. I'm not sure. How about a change for you? None? Gavin, yeah, how about a change for you? Anything? Well... <laughs> His dad doesn't like when his math grade changes. Oh, well, the, uh, your dad, you know, he'll get over that. You know, he's a math guy. How about you? A change for you. Going to college. Yeah. Shoot. Oh, yeah, always got to change shoes. One for you? Any kind of change. Come on. <laughs> no, something. You'll come up with. How about, oh, you've had a few changes in your life, so, yeah. Becoming a mom. That'll do it, Yeah. Well, you know, when you go through those changes, uh, there's a great, and I haven't seen it, but I'm going to have to, to rent it now or, or buy it, the, uh, the movie Inside Out. And, and they talk about this here. Uh, and it says, uh, talking about how it feels to go through change. Uh, there, there's a character in it. Well, it's like with your Play-Doh when you make different things with it, when you're changing it. Uh, there's a character named Riley who lives in Minnesota, and they're going, their family's going to move uh, to California, a big move in their family. And what happens inside her head when the family has to move there? She has several characters who play her emotions, her feelings, and let me introduce them to you. You've probably seen, how many of you have seen the movie? Have you seen that? Yeah, see, I'm behind the times already on that. So the ones they talk about, sadness is blue. Now, we're going we're gonna to imitate this with your faces. So everybody show me a sad face. Yeah, oh, I know it's sad. You know, these things happen. Uh, uh, like when my Hoosiers didn't have a very good year, I was sad most of the year, believe me. But anyway, then the, another one is fear. Let's see a fear look. Ah! Right? Yeah. It's like when Connie gets home and I haven't cleaned out the dishes in the sink, I, hear, I get fear in my face. Right? Anyway. <laughs> that's real fear, believe me, you guys. So I'll put a dot on my hand hold up here in a minute, but that's a different story. Now, the other one is... Dis, or, uh, disgust. You ever get disgusted at something? Said, "Oh my gosh, yeah, 
You too? Yeah, that's, or, or I call it sort of uh, bewil amazement or bewilderment, because with Connie, when I go home and I say some statement, her eyes start to roll. It, it's, it's not really discussed. It's like, here we go again. Yeah, most exercise, yeah, she gets most of her exercise that way. So uh, let's, let's see it, ama let's see it discuss. Okay, everybody, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And then anger. Arr, everybody, arr, get mad, get mad. Yeah, that's, that's always a good one. But the best is joy. And they do this, and you've got to turn your head upside down because they show her with the head. So it's a big smile on your face. There we go. Yeah. Those are all. <laughs> the, joy is my favorite, of course. And, and I like it when people are happy. He uh, says, you recognize all these characters. In fact, they're inside all of us. You know, uh, have you ever felt all these? I bet you have. Uh, now, the... It talks about, we learn the story that Riley needs each and every one of these emotions as she learns to deal with the change in her life, uh, moving from one city to another. You all have probably been through changes yourself like that. If you've changed schools or changed cities or place you lived or whatever. Uh, it says, even though Joy would like for her to be happy all the time, Riley actually needs to allow all those feelings, including sadness, fear, disgust, and anger, to move through difficult things and feel better about being in a new place and making new friends. When I was in sixth grade, I lived in a little town named Kiwana, Indiana, which is up north in Fulton County. 500 people in the town, if you counted cats and dogs. You knew everybody. You know, I was in sixth grade. I was going to be on the basketball team on the starting five the next year because we only had six players and the other guy wasn't very good. So I was all excited, going to do this, and my dad changed jobs. And we had to move miles away, like tw almost 20 miles away. And I was going to go to a different school, the huge town of Rochester, Indiana, the Rochester. Fighting zebras, by the way. Anyway, I was going to have to get absorbed by it. And I was so mad and upset. And I think I went through every one of those emotions and went there. I, didn't, I think I knew two people in the town. Well, you know what? It turned out to be one of the best moves I ever made. You know, met a lot of good friends, had a good school, and a good relationship. But at the time, it was pretty tough, like when you go through changes. Uh, any change we go through, whether it's moving or changing grades and teachers or someone going away or even just getting older, uh, will be filled with lots of emotions, and that's all right. Today, we're hearing a Bible story that says that Jesus can help change us from the inside out and is always with us through every change, and that's the important thing to remember. No matter what changes we go through, Jesus and God are there with us. Sometimes it's hard to re remember that. Uh, this week when you play with your Play-Doh, I hope you guys will take your Play-Doh home and make stuff out of it, and, you know, form it into different stuff. Uh, maybe you can make a different character out of dif different colors, just like the characters in the movie. Uh, let's say our little prayer now. And just repeat it after me. I am a piece of God's clay. I am a piece of God's clay. clay. And God invites us all to play. God invites us all to play. When things are different, we can say. When things are different, we can say. I can change, I'll make a way. I can change, I'll make a way. Okay, dear God, thank you for giving us so many ways to work through the changes in life. We know you are always with us, helping us each and every day. Thank you, and all God's children said, amen. amen. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. For this series, we have paired uh, scripture lessons with contemporary readings or reflections to kind of help us get a little deeper into the theme so that when we go to the scripture, it's easier for us to pick up on the areas that, um, that, are, that are being brought out. So our contemporary reading uh, was written by uh, Marsha McPhee from Worship Design Studio. And she has written this, we all live with a committee inside our minds. If you've ever been a part of a committee or had to go to a committee meeting, you know what that could be like. Um, and if you've not seen the movie Inside Out, this will help you kind of prepare for the analogy during the message. So we all live with a committee inside our minds. So hear this described in a reading by Marsha McPhee. There's a committee inside my head, all seemingly a part of me, of who I am, and yet, at times, I feel I am at war with myself, within myself, until I feel I am without myself. 
Sometimes I wander among the committee, among what feels like ruins, pondering, wondering, whatever happened to disjoint, disturb, disrupt the whole that is me. There is a committee inside my head. A simple decision becomes a giant task. A relationship becomes so complicated. A dream dies. Fear gets the better of me. I fly off the handle. I quash my passion. I wallow in uncertainty. The committee is recognizable. I try each one on for size and they all fit. The realist and the dreamer collide, but they are separated by the wall which I construct in order to protect each piece. But what happens if they are allowed to dance with one another? The realist fine-tuning the dreamer urging on? The eager and spontaneous irritates the orderly, but they are frozen as I fight to defend the rights of both. But what happens if they are allowed to dance with each other? Order and spontaneity combine, birthing creativity. Impatience meets stubbornness, and the nonconformist makes demands, and all the while the mediator pleads frighteningly, afraid of the passion which lives within. But what if they dance? What if they play? Push and pull that turns to give and take. What if they are allowed this relating? What if they are allowed this joy? Can I let go? Not of my committee, but I can let go of my own tight grip around the throat of my own potential. Potential fire, passion, caring, groundedness, freedom, and love. Can I see that which is holy and fine? That which is me made in the image of God. Amen. At this time, we'll have a moment for special music. Were you there when he rose? 
Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? How sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my I've learned a lot about some of our musicians uh, this weekend. I did not know Nick could hit notes that high. Impressive, sir. As always, thank you for your gift of music. Uh, and I didn't know Henry Cr Crane could play uh, drums upside down, but he does in the uh, indoor percussions um, show. Uh, just as an aside, they will be heading to Dayton on Wednesday, and they will uh, be competing, f hopefully, for nationals all the way through. So please pray for their safe uh, travels as well as for them to just kick it. And uh, after seeing the show yesterday, they do, and it is phenomenal. But yeah, they, they like took our and they spun him upside down, and he's still playing the drums. It's pretty impressive. And he kept time. I mean, that was just really awesome. So that's pretty cool. Now we switched over to our ancient reading, and so we're going to look to the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. We will be uh, using Eugene Peterson's The Message translation, and you'll see, you'll see why as we kind of get into this. The good news of Jesus Christ, the message, begins here, following to the letter of the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Watch closely. I am sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you, thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wild preaching a baptism of life changing, life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem and as they confessed their sins were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama to whom I'm a mere stand will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him. Along with the Spirit, a voice, You are my Son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, the same Spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For forty wilderness days and nights, he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the sacred word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. I mentioned Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message. Um, that's literally the translation we just read from. And I love his interpretation of the Scripture. How wonderful is that phrasing? the real star of this unfolding story. The real star. Okay, next slide. The real star is Jesus. 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit who works in and through Him and now us will change us from the inside out. That's why we use that translation, from the inside out. This is not mere cleansing with water on the outside, but an inside job. In our encounter with Jesus, we will be changed. And as we encounter the living Christ and everything around us in our lifetimes, we are invited to the kind of change that will bring us about will bring about a renewed spirit, will bring about vitality within us, and therefore around us. And many of us have experienced times when we tried to undergo change in our lives, but without dealing with the accompanying feelings within us. It can cause some real problems. Likewise, John's baptisms were coupled with confession, which was another way to describe the inner workings the inner acknowledgement of the need for change. As we considered last week, change can be actually forced on us by crisis. Or it can happen to us by chance. But John's invitation was about a third category of change. Choice. Choice. Spiritual growth happens when we decide to lean into the kinds of change that will bring more health to ourselves, to our relationships, to our community. Our feature animation this week, you've already heard about it during the children's moment, is the film Inside Out. Inside Out, the story of a little girl, Riley, who is going through big changes in her life. And the message from this award-winning animated film that really hits home is the complexity and the necessity of of our emotions around change. So let's take a look now at the original trailer from the movie from nine years ago, the original Inside Out. Let's take a listen. Well, No, that's all right. For some reason, it's not getting the the internet. All right, so now your homework is to go watch the movie. It's cute, and it has personifications of all of the different kinds of um, emotions that are within a person. And what's great about this movie is Pixar, as they released it in different regions, like for example, when the dad is sitting down at the table with the family, um, all of the little emotions inside his head are um, watching a hockey match not paying attention to what his wife's saying. He's, he's thinking about a hockey game. But over in the UK, the same movie, they animated the dad watching a soccer match. <laughs> so it's like they really know uh, their audience. And what's fabulous about this is the different ways that these characters arrange themselves within the, the human mind to then spark behavior. Um, a a little bit of tension between the the dad and the daughter where the the anger uh, personification in the dad says, put the foot down! Put the foot down! And the daughter is like going off on something and he goes, fine, go to your room. And the little anger guy inside the dad's head kind of, oh, we're going to watch it, okay. Pretend I didn't say anything. So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure Mm -hmm. did. Something's wrong. We're going to find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Ahem. With a nice pass over the reef, comes across center ice. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, you gotta be kidding me! For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot?
school was great, all right? What was that? I thought you said we were gonna act casual. Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. All right, make a show of force. I don't want to have to put the foot down. No, not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude, old no, man. No, 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 breathe. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2! I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Yeah, well, look. Prepare the foot. Keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Just shut up! Fire! That's it. Go to your room. The foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah. Woo! Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. Come, fly with me, Gachinha. <sighs> oh, goodness. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's good. It is good. When we... What we learn is that we, we need all the emotions to move through any moment of change. And when we just try to be happy all the time, if that's what we expect of life, then we're going to stall the process of moving through changes. Sadness is a, is a key factor. We have to mourn what's being left behind in order to move through it, acknowledge all the feelings, all the different ways that we are experiencing change. Let the tears be a part of the cleansing waters of being transformed from the inside out. If you uh, have not seen this film, don't miss this important story for children and adults before the sequel, Inside Out 2, which is coming up in a matter of weeks, um, will be released when we meet Riley again, but going through teenage changes. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, those of you who've raised teenagers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So all new emotions come alongside with the original childhood emotions. And it's a fabulous way to kind of think about how complex we as human beings are emotionally, especially with dealing with change. So we talked about the change cycle last week at a glance, and today we're going to look at the, the red zone when you first encounter change. Let's take a look at that slide right now, please. So there's the, the, um, the whole cycle. So we're going to look at just the, the, the red zone um, right now. Uh, so stage one, loss, um, kind of becoming... Well, stage one, let's go ahead and look at the next slide, and we'll, we'll, we'll focus in on that specifically to see. So stage one is loss to safety. Loss to safety. Loss because something has become different. Something has become different. Maybe something's lost, like a job or a relationship or an opportunity. Maybe something is new, like a, a boss or a project or a diagnosis. The primary experience of stage one is loss of control, which is never something that we enjoy. And either consciously or unconsciously, your thoughts are very, very cautious. You experience feelings of fear, or maybe worry, or concern, and your behavior becomes paralyzed. Even a perceived good change can, can make us feel this way. It can evoke these kinds of responses. So the first stage can be difficult because, you know, like driving in fog, you don't know what's going to be ahead. But for your own safety, you have to keep moving, and it's important to acknowledge, not ignore or deny your losses and your concerns. So your priority, what, what do you need to be looking out for as change just kind of reveals itself in your life? Your first priority in stage one is to find personal safety, to regain some sense of control. And there are key questions that you need to ask yourself and find the answers for. What are my specific concerns? What realistically is the worst that can happen? What's most likely to happen? And if you can truly answer these things honestly, if you can answer them honestly, and then you can move on to stage two, which is doubt. Let's take a look at the next slide, please. Stage two finds you experiencing doubt and a sense of uncertainty. Doubt is the brain's way of slowing you down, even stopping you from taking action until more relevant information is available. 
This doubt, it often creates defensive behavior, which is a way of maintaining control. This creates feelings of resentment, thoughts that are skeptical, behavior that is resistant. Unfortunately, during these times, many people just get angry. They get angry and they blame others. They're willing to fight to prove that their way or the old way is still better. But stage two can cause you to ignore the obvious and only see the picture the way you want to see it, not as things are actually happening to you. The main thing is to move past the fiction and gather accurate, valid information about the change to get as clear a picture of your reality as is possible. So, is this new thing? Is this change? Is it dangerous? Is it a threat to my well-being? Simple fear response and basic questions are just a part of naturally experiencing change. No, it's not pleasant. I'm never going to tell you that change is pleasant which is why we naturally resist it in the first place. And yes, it is scary, which is why we sometimes try to skip over this part. So those are our first two stages, and as the series progresses, we'll go through the rest of the journey. Let's look at the last slide together. Because it reminds us of our theology of baptism. Our theology of baptism. And it says that we die to the old. But we believe and we have faith that we are raised from death to life. Can you think of any change greater than that? To be raised from death into life? This is the good news. In the midst of the difficult first reactions to change is to be reminded that the greatest possible change we could ever go through has already been taken care of for us through the love and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. So as we go through these changes, as we're scared, as we're angry, as we're not sure how things are going to work out, we remember, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And we remember, I will never leave you or forsake you. Those promises made by Jesus through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit abide within us to provide that inside-out kind of peace if we will just take a moment, take in a deep breath, and listen to what it is that God has to say to us. Those reassuring reminders of His never-ending presence. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the sustainer. Amen. Each week we have a time of contemplation as an opportunity to shape Plato as we think about change in our own lives. So today I invite you to use the Plato once again. And I'm not serving you communion today, so I'm going to play too. So go ahead and get that out. If you can't get it open, ask a neighbor for assistance because I know these little tiny jars are a little hard to open sometimes. So use the Play-Doh to make a shape that represents how you are feeling on the inside about change. So take a moment to make a shape that represents how you are feeling on the inside about change.
change. Lord, I'm ready for a change. Wipe away these tears, Lord, and end my night of weeping. Wash away the old ways. Replace my pain with your joy. Lord, I'm ready. Imagine what the committee members inside of your head are trying to convince you about your approach to change. I have a little question mark. What? That's how my approach to change is sometimes. Are we serious? Is that really happening? That's my, my thing. Now I'm going to rethink that. Even if you think you have no idea what you feel inside about change, simply allow now the reshaping of the clay to now be your prayer of opening to revelations inside you to allow the image of God within you to have a little stronger voice in your life. That of you which is made in the image of God. Allow it to have the floor, so to speak, of the committee. As we come into our time of prayer. Feel free to continue working the clay, as it were as we remain in an attitude of prayer. For all who are experiencing change as a result of civic policies and laws, may they be supported in their search for good outcomes and resolutions from our community and outside, we pray. For all who are experiencing change in their sense of identity or work, May they know their sacred worth no matter the chaos of unsettled circumstances from our community and outside. For all who are experiencing change in their sense of home, may they be welcomed into safe and vibrant communities of belovedness from our community and outside. For all who are experiencing change in their health, may they feel the healing power of love and care from our community and outside. For all who are facing change in their lives, may they, may we, find the strength and courage to move forward for our community and outside, we pray. And now in this silence, we offer, O Lord, to You the deepest yearning of our hearts. Holy and living God, when we have hesitated to dig deep, when we have been too afraid to look within and give ourselves the understanding that we need, forgive us and remind us that we are forgiven. When we have lost touch with your presence within us, thinking that we might fall alone rather than fall into your arms, forgive us and remind us that we are forgiven. When we have forgotten that it isn't all up to us, 
that you are also changing us continually from the inside out. Forgive us and remind us that we are forgiven. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who came to change our hearts for good and taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our song response for prayer. As the ushers come forward to receive the offering this morning, we celebrate the possibilities that these funds represent. We celebrate the opportunities where God has put us to work, and we celebrate where the things we can do, we choose to do for the sake of Christ. This church thanks you for all that you do, for all that you give freely, and acknowledges that if you were not generous, we would not be here. No matter your contribution or means, you are a vital and appreciated part of this ministry. Let the ushers come forward at this time and let us give thanks to God's generosity by practicing a little of our own. I know why he carried the cross on Calvary's hill and wore the crown of thorns that he wore. I know why he bled and died upon that rugged cross and
Please stand and we will sing as our doxology, Jesus, we are here. pray. Holy God, we offer these gifts and the gift of our co-working relationship with you. May we use our lives to lean into your paths, into the changes you have in store for us. Bless all of this to your glory and to the work of making the world a better place for all. In Jesus' name, we pray and all God's people said together, amen. Please remain standing for our closing song. This is a day of new beginnings. Number 383 in the hymnal if you like the little black dots. Otherwise, up on the screen. From the Gospel according to Riley, that main character of the cartoon we watched the clip of, from sadness, we used to play tag and stuff. So remember that your spirit within is created to play with God's spirit. So go into the world knowing that the potter God is still shaping and reshaping you as you were made to do. That the teacher Jesus is inviting you to a change of heart, making it all so very possible. And the adventurous spirit is luring you to more play and curiosity in your precious life. To go out beyond these stained glass windows into the broken world that we all live in as broken pieces fit together by grace and love to love others. That as we have received a blessing, we might go out into this broken world and be a blessing for someone else. Even with as complicated as the committee members in our head, we go forward in love and grace. And so now go in peace. Stay in courage. Amen.